Throughout the United States, there are legends of strange, unidentified creatures stretching back hundreds of years. This program is a legend brought to life. It's told through dramatization, eyewitness accounts, and expert interviews. Some images are violent in nature. Viewer discretion is advised. There's a lot of mysterious creatures hanging on the swamp. Sometimes you'd be sound asleep and you hear shrieks in the dark. There's been a lot of strange attacks here lately. In the swamps, there's things that you barely catch a glimpse at the corner of your eye and vanish. There's a monster that'll come out the marsh and grab you up in a heartbeat. We believe that it's out there. He is out there. Just because you don't believe don't mean you're safe. Did you hear that? Oh, dear God. Some people go into the swamp, they don't come out. My name's Luke. I grew up around here, lived here my whole life. Been running Cajun Beast for 10 odd years. What I do out here is animal control. I capture and relocate dangerous animals, gators in swimming pools, snakes behind them, stoves, things like that. Calls out here are getting stranger and stranger over the last few months. More than I've seen in 20 some years doing this line of work. Aggressive attacks, creatures doing things that aren't in the nature. Right now, I'm heading to Larry Gaday's farm and seen something sneaked up there last night, gnawed on one of his cows. And it was probably a gator, but I'm going to find out what did it and see if it's still around. With all the things that have been hitting these parts the last few years, folks are getting all superstitious. Something strange happens, people get riled up. 10 times out of 10, some animal done something natural or some person done something terrible. Here in South Louisiana, the swamps are very remote, very hostile, very dangerous. And over the years, the legends from the old timers have brought up different ideas of what creatures lived in these swamps. The Rougarou, the Honey Island Swamp Monster, the Alligator Man. There's lots of different stories about lots of different things that live in the swamp there. Beat us here. I didn't expect that. Ooh. He doesn't look it, but he knows his stuff. Hey, Larry's acting a little rattled. Is he? You wouldn't show me until you got here. See you up there, Cupcake. We've been working together for over 10 years, and we've known each other for um, forever, it seems like. Half my life. Yeah, uh, two thirds of my life. Two thirds. <laughs> boys had to come out here like this. Hey, Larry. My boys was out here early this morning and found one of my cows. She's all tore up. Takes to it. This is where the cow got attacked. I ain't lost a calf or two through the years, but never a 750-pound cow. Whatever did that, it'd be. Oh, man. Kyle's all tore up. What the hell? I don't see no tracks over here. The ground's too dry. Look at them flies go. I ain't ever seen an animal do something like this. Got deep lacerations back here. His name Big Cat, Panther. I don't know where the neck's been thrashed, it might have been. But uh, you like all the enemies are there. I'm thinking it's them Jagno boys. They ain't never been right with the law. They always doing something. Jagno's got that property over there on the other side of the field. Big family. 
They've been in trouble with the law. They've been in trouble with me. They've stolen from me. I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't come over here and do something like this. Jagno boys with poachers, they would have took the meat. You really think someone did this, you ought to call the sheriff. You ain't need mess with this. Took a big animal to take this cow down. Took a bigger one to drag it this far. 25, 30 feet. I don't think a cat would have drug it that far. I'm kind of stumped right now. It didn't leave behind anything that we could use to ID it. No teeth, no claws, no scat. There's deep lacerations, like something that a Florida panther could do, but there's no way it would drag it that far. And if a bear had come in and done that, well, there wouldn't be anything left there because it would just tear it to shreds. That's how it would kill it. It's like a panther killed it, and a bear came in and drug it 20 feet, and then coyotes came in and started feeding on it until somebody scared it off. The odds of all that happening are like a billion to one. spook your dog again. Hey, Sam. Whenever cops have a problem with animals, they give us a holler. Homo sapiens they can handle, but anything else, they get Cajun beasts involved. What happened? I was giving her food, and she latched onto my oh. arm. And then I locked her in that room, Ooh. calmed her down, and she went right through the door jam and everything. She splintered it, you can see. And then I came up here. That dog right there, did that yeah. see you? Yeah. She would have gone for my throat. Been having a lot of weird ones lately, especially dogs. Don't you? Hey, right hop down. If you've been abusing it or beating it up, I'm going to pull you down that roof myself and let her finish the job. Yeah, I don't mistreat my animals. Trio, tell her. Elry, keep quiet. Hey, girl. Careful, Hey. Good girl. Good girl. No sign of rabies. I swear to God, she was not like that. Go ahead. 10-4 en route. What are you even doing? Hey, Tam, I got a call I got to go on. You got everything under control? There ain't nothing wrong with this dog, except her pads are all torn up. Sure, y'all. I got to get down. Elric, keep tight. We're going to get you down. Don't leave, bro. Oh, my god. That dog was working on that door for a while. I mean, he even gnawed on that door handle and tore it apart. i never seen a dog do anything like that. He's stronger than you look. I just knew something had to be really spooking the dog for it to go to those links. I didn't find any signs of rabies, no signs of abuse. I can't really explain it. It's like she's possessed or something. We got to see if we can find some tracks, because I ain't seen nothing up here. It's too dry. Whatever it is could still be around here, so be on your toes. It's really thick over here. We're going to walk the fence. See if we can see some fur trapped on it. I ain't seeing nothing. What you got over there, Jules? Nothing. Ah. We'll go closer to the water, see if there's some tracks in the soft mud. There ain't nothing. I'm not one to speculate outside of what I know to be true, but based on what's happened here, there's a dangerous predator out there, and it certainly can't be around people. So we're going to figure out what did it, and we're going to get it out of here. Whatever it was came up through the swamps. We're going to have to get the traps and get them set. What traps do you want? All of them. We're going to have to set up a bear trap, too. Yeah, call wildlife and fisheries. Let them know what we're doing. I've been doing this for 25 years. And that cow, that cow freaked me out. For the past year, things have been getting really crazy around here. Animals dying, and people are starting to get worried. Worried about the old superstitions and starting to believe them again. And frankly, I don't blame them. Right here, right now, people are scared. 
you can see the fear in their eyes. There's animals that come out of the woods to our property that's never come out before. It's like they're spooked by something that's out there. I can remember a time growing up, animals died. Cattle found dead in the fields, and fish, they were all dead. The bayou was just paved in silver. You don't understand something not right is going on. The legends my grandparents used to tell me, it's like they're coming true. One of the situations that people are now discovering all over the world is what happens to a giant predator when its habitat or food supply has been compromised. So for example, with the decreases that we've seen in the Arctic sea ice, polar bears are often foraging into areas that bring them into contact with humans. So in a place like the bayou, you could imagine a hurricane moving through or maybe a human-mediated catastrophe such as an oil spill. Well, any disaster like that is going to force a large animal into contact with humans, whereas normally you wouldn't see them. Well, my family gave me the nickname Trio. My name is actually Patrice Lambert III. A little fancy, but uh, don't go telling people at the office that. They go give me a hard time. Right now, we're headed out to the cemetery. Apparently, there was some kind of desecration. It's not too uncommon for these kind of things to happen in these remote areas. I transferred to this office a few years ago from a larger parish. We got a few strange calls back then, but nothing like we got here. Watch where we're walking, fellas. Make sure we ain't stepping on no graves. Always so damn spooky at cemeteries. Hey, Vaughn. Yeah. What we got? Family crypt broken into three bodies. Oh, it's left of them. Oh, Where's this guy's head? Sheriff's office got called to the local cemetery because three bodies were dragged from their crib, and apparently one of them is now missing a head. You ever seen anything like this before? Crips like these, being the way they are, we have break-ins, but not like this. Cemeteries here are above ground in Louisiana because we have a very high water table. You get a lot of rain, water table rises, and you're trying to dig six feet under, all you're doing is digging a swimming hole. Come a flood or a big heavy rain, them suckers just pop right back out of the ground. That's likely why we have all the stories about voodoo and zombies and vampires. The one big downside to keeping cribs up top like this, it's a lot of grave robbing. It's definitely not grave robbery. The missus right there still has on her jewelry. The grave robber was after the head. Why just this guy's head? We got in that mutilated cow over at Larry Godet's farm, and this decapitated corpse exhumed at the cemetery. Now, I don't want to say they're related, but uh, I'm definitely not going to rule it out. Some people in those swamps practice the art of black magic. A lot of it's done in the middle of the night in these graveyards. A few years ago, we had some satanic activity in the area here. About 10 miles north of us, they had some cows killed in a graveyard. Someone here is practicing that. Who it is or where they are, unknown. A little further. That's good. There's been a rash of animal attacks around here. Just now, full-grown cows torn up on Larry's farm. My cousin Jules and I are setting up just a bunch of different traps and snares just to be safe. From the looks of that cow, I'm banking on it being something pretty big. We got a bunch of different foothold stops. What they call bear traps. Got an Anita four and a half inch right here. What I like to use mostly is the snares. 
because with the footholds, you're typically going to break the animal's legs, which is just like killing them in most cases. The snare here, this little puppy is rated for about 850 pounds. So we just anchor it into the ground. They walk into it, and voila. To use any of these tools of the trade, you need a trapping license. Unless it's on your own property, then you can get any damn thing you want. You can catch a neighbor's cat, it don't matter. As long as you got one of these out here, this baby right here, that's a monster trap here. People just dream about having one of these things. <laughs> I've heard all kinds of stories from all kinds of people. They talk about this thing called a skunk ape, the Bigfoot, the Rougarou. A lot of people think a lot of different things about the Rougarou. Like the American natives, they think it's a shape shifter. People up in Baton Rouge, they think it's the Bigfoot. The French trappers, they brought old legends of werewolves. Hell, half the people I know know stories that are unexplained, and they all blame it on the Rougarou. My mama, when I was a kid, she told me she watched a man stand up, and he had like a wolf head. She thought it was a big dog until it took off running on his back legs. And my mama never, ever lied to me a day in her life. Whatever it is, I know it comes out of the swamp, and it's dangerous, and I sure as hell ain't gonna mess with it. <laughs> this is my little baby. This is the stealth cam. It's basically a camera trap or a trail cam. It is a motion-activated camera. It has 40 infrared sensors that take excellent pictures, even in the dark, up to 50 feet. This beautiful thing takes three megapixel photos and nine image bursts. Anytime it senses motion, it's going to take nine pictures really fast. We house it in a hardened steel weatherproof case. This thing, completely unbreakable. Well, I know Jules thinks we'll find something out of the ordinary, a mega gator, some mysterious bay creature. And, I mean, who knows? We might. But that's what this baby's for. If it's out there, we'll know. Checked the traps again this morning on Godet's farm. Found nothing. But at least no other animals were attacked. I got mixed feelings about it. But you got a snake coming out your toilet again. That's an issue. You have a possible animal attack in the woods. You come down and put your eyes on to see if an animal did it. Yeah, I'll be right there. That's one. Apparently, a hunter was in the woods early this morning and ran across this phone. But we're still trying to figure out who it belongs to. It's prepaid, and a lot of hikers get these so they don't mess up their real phones in the woods. After watching the footage, he contacted us. There it goes. <laughs> Climbing around my arm. There he goes. It looks like it could be some kind of joke. I don't know what would pull somebody up, you know, that far up in the tree canopy. I mean, some kind of like animal trap or something. I mean, it could be a snare with a dead fall. Wait, or something. it can't be a snare, see? Right there. If it were a snare, it'd wrap around his feet and pull him up feet first. He's going up head first. He's right. Can't say it's a hunter trap for sure, but can't rule it out. Let me slow it down right here. You see him getting pulled up? There's no ropes, nothing. It's like he's throwing 20 feet or something. Then he drops the cell phone, lands upright, and he disappears. I don't know what to tell you. There's no chance there's some kind of animal then. Y'all run into that? When Larry Day's cow was killed, it wasn't thrown. It was dragged, but we're still trying to figure out what did it. This guy appears to be Caucasian, probably about six foot tall, and there is no sign of him. I mean, we searched that whole area. We came up with nothing. The legend of the Rougarou evolved from the Loop Guru, which came from France. When the French come over, they brought over their myths 
When they got over here, it became the Ruger root. People believe it to be a werewolf-type animal. He's definitely a monster that lives in the deep, dark swamps. I'll tell you here, the Rougarou is not some dumb animal. He's very vicious. He's able to pass himself off as people or other animals. You don't know what you're dealing with. Have I ever seen him? No, not yet. But I think I've heard things in there at night that I could explain to be the Rougarou. Look, we've been having some weird things going on lately. It took a big animal to take this cow down. Where's this guy's head? I don't know what would pull somebody up that far up in the tree canopy. I mean, some kind of, like, animal or something. A few of our current investigations actually concentrate on one stretch of bayou. Larry Godet's cow, that body at the cemetery, that missing hiker, all occurred just inside or at the border of the swamplands. Both the cow and corpse were mutilated in a, what I would call a brutal manner. I'm trying to find out if there was any similarities between their wounds. Yeah. Fred's just about the best there is when it comes to knowing knives around here, so hopefully he can help. Come on business today. Whoa. I want to know if you can narrow down what type of blade might have been used to do something like that. We're a little short on leads, and anything could help. This is going to be a rough one here. Can't see much details in this picture. Man, man. Maybe something like this is a little more up your alley. Well, I can tell right away the techniques are completely different. This one, the head is fairly clean and deliberate. But your cow, she's slashed pretty wild. Could be an animal clawing repeatedly. Or a strong somebody didn't know what the hell he was doing. I got some odds and ends in the back. I'll try a few knives, maybe we'll get a match. Oh, yeah, listen, man, I'd appreciate that. Sure, no problem. Just got this in this morning. This isn't cowhide, but it'll get us in the ballpark. We're trying to mimic what we see in the picture there. Try this. The lacerations aren't the same. He just couldn't match the wounds in those photos. Let's try it with a different knife. He's going to test out some more blades to see if he can reproduce the same marks. Hopefully, at the very least, we can rule out if a human was involved. I still don't think a knife did. But then I can't, in my mind, come up with what animal could have done that. Animals don't kill for pleasure. Man's the only animal that does that. Something is killing animals around here. It's not natural for that to happen. Some of the animals get killed at night. Something will come in and just, I mean, just kill them. Not kill them and eat them, just kill them. We got a call from this lady last night. Said she saw an animal out on the edge of her property. Found that a little odd. She kept referring to it as an animal. Usually, you see something firsthand, you say what it is, a, an alligator or a coyote or whatever. Yella? Miss Badron. <laughs> Ain't no officers here. Luke Baptiste, how you doing? <laughs> Maggie. Why don't you show me what you got here? OK, it's uh, over here. Oh, um, is it across the bayou, what yeah. you saw? Yeah, mm-hmm. The last few nights, I would say around 10 o'clock, I have spotted a peculiar creature. <laughs> One night, I saw it right here in this opening right here. All right, all right, that's a natural spot, something yeah. to come down there and drink. Uh -huh. I've seen it over to the left of this tree over here. Right, you sure it wasn't an alligator? It was not an alligator. This was this was something different. Well, I've been living here pretty much my whole damn life, so I'm used to people talking about what's uh, lurking in the bayou. And I've never been inclined to believe it much. You know, I just thought it's folklore that you grow up with. But uh, I'm just staying inside my house because uh, I don't really want to get near that thing. What it look like? Well, it's reddish colored. It's almost like the same color as an orangutan. It's humanoid. I mean, it walks upright. I'd say it's a little taller than you. It's about six foot. I'm sure, maybe it wasn't just your point of view where it was? No. Uh, I told my neighbors, and they were like, uh, tell you what, you saw the skunk ape. You saw the skunk ape. <laughs> you know? And uh, your neighbors like to drink like, a lot, don't, don't they? Uh, skunk ape's basically the swamp's Bigfoot, big, hairy, upright thing. 
But I'll tell you what, in all my years working with animals, I've never seen something that fits that description. Sorry. I've heard of the skunk ape, but to my knowledge, there's no scientific evidence that supports the existence of a creature like that. It is described as kind of a reddish Bigfoot, somewhat like an orangutan, but one that emits an unusually pungent odor, hence the name skunk ape. And we've discovered maybe 25 new species of primates in the last decade or so. Typically, anytime you find new species, each species is gonna be more different in its DNA. So if we had DNA from something new, like the skunk ape, we would be able to tell, hey, this is an organism we've never seen before. So far, I am not aware of any scientific evidence that supports the existence of the skunk ape. I took some photos. You got yeah, photos? I, I do got photos. We're standing I mean, out here not... talking, and you got photos? <laughs> that would have been a good thing to start with. I'd like to see them. It's as good as I could manage. I don't want to get too close. <laughs> you can kind of see uh, the outline right there. The hill? You can see it right there, that mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I don't want to jump to any conclusions, but it does look like you got something out of the ordinary. It's big, too. Uh, let's walk your property, see if we can find some tracks or something. People have been saying that uh, something tore up a bunch of cows on Larry's farm the other day. Yeah, see there, that's how rumors get started and folks get worked up. There was only one cow. I had a note because I was there. Uh, it looks like something's been through here. See how it's all matted down and the branches are broken? Look at this. Look at there. We got some fur. Oh, yeah. It's red, all right. The water's shallow enough here, and there's fish in this pond. Makes easy feeding for bear, panther, wild dogs, wolves, whatever's passing through here. What I would think is a bear was up in that there tree. The red's not the color of bear. They're black around here. Here we go. We got a track right here. Look at that. That's a big one, all right. My god, that's bigger than I thought. Wow. A rash of recent events in this remote Louisiana town has left the locals on edge. An unknown predator is slaughtering livestock. Whatever did that it be? Graves are being desecrated and a hiker is missing. <laughs> Some townsfolk believe the carnage is the work of a skunk ape, a legendary Bigfoot creature. Other locals believe it's an elusive shapeshifter called the Rougarou. But the animal nuisance experts at Cajun Beasts are searching for another explanation. Here we go. We got a track right here. That's a big one, all right. Wow. Sometimes what folks think is a big two-legged animal could actually be a four-legged animal. What happens, the rear paw lands slightly ahead of or just behind the forepaw print, and it smears out the middle and elongates it. it. Makes it look like nothing we've ever seen around here. Yeah, that'd be my bet for what's going on whenever people think they got a big foot, unless they've just got an outright hoax. What got me concerned here is we got claw marks right here on the outside and then the inside, but there's nothing in the middle. What has claws like that? I don't know. I've never seen anything like that before. What's going through my mind is maybe the animal had some sort of accident. I mean, that's the only logical thing I can think of right now. From my perspective, the cripple foot is a very compelling example of, uh, of evidence for the existence of Sasquatch. Cripplefoot refers to a case of Sasquatch footprints that were discovered in 1969 in the northeastern Washington state. They were notable for two reasons. One, thousands of individual footprints were counted. The second aspect is the deformity of the right foot. It is quite skewed, pulling apart the joints out here on the outer edge, producing these large bunionettes. The third digit's either amputated or pushed up out of alignment with the other toes. Some have suggested that this could, could well be a hoax. 
The problem with that is that there are only a handful of people who could look at this and provide a description of the, uh, the anatomical and medical basis of it. So for a hoaxer in 1969 to have perpetuated such a hoax is virtually inconceivable in my mind. It's about six feet long, probably weighed about 500 pounds. I don't know how many times you've seen it. Two nights in a row, she got a picture of it standing right over there by that stump. Usually, we set up traps and let them do the waiting for us. But we got enough evidence that this thing's been through here the last few nights now. And with a violent attack like we had at Larry's farm, we figured it's best to throw ourselves at this thing full force, see if we can't catch this thing before somebody gets hurt. So you'll sit up here. We'll get Jules set up over there. Yeah, I can get a real clear shot right here. We just got to make sure it comes out of the woods. That's no problem. I brought my pheromone card. I'll go get him. Go get him. He swears they work. The purpose of the pheromone cards is to create an invisible fence to kind of corral the thing in. So if it goes and smells the stuff that it doesn't like, it's going to turn away, and then it'll get a whiff of the stuff it does like and hopefully go to that smell. <laughs> Basically, he's going to go to where we want him to go. I got some ones that I know he'll like, and I got some ones he probably ain't going to like. All right. Which ones you want? The ones he'll like. There you go. You take the ones he won't like. <laughs> what the hell is this? You said it was the good smelling ones. Well, you ain't no skunk ape, are you? God. Skunk ape will like it. And I'm going to take my home brew here. <gasps> oh, so disgusting. You guys get right through here. I'm going to get along the bank. Oh, 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 yeah. Put out Jules' home brew pheromone cards. Pheromones is a chemical that's released. It will either attract or repel an animal. Yeah, that'll get him. Hopefully, this gets it out in the open. Hang some of them up high. There you go. Reach on up there. There's a science behind it. I just don't know if Jules' way of going about it is particularly scientific. Territorial, you know, like pissing all over the tree like dogs do. People say the bayou has eyes, you know? They're just looking at you, but you can't see it. One day, I was walking out to go check the mail, and there's this big black animal. He just stopped, and it was huge. It was bigger than anything I've ever seen out here. It's not what you see that can get you, it's what you can't see is can get you. Headed over to the Jagno property, trying to see if I can get a statement or any information about that cow that was killed on Larry's farm. Larry Godet thinks the Jagno boys may have killed this cow. This family lays claim to a lot of land that may or may not be theirs. This gate right here is one of the defined boundaries, so as long as we stay on this side, we should be good. Sheriff's office. I'm just looking for someone with the last name Jagno. All I want is five minutes of your time. Anybody here? Hello? That was just not being dead. You one of them Jagno boys, ain't you? Henri? Listen, man, I just want to ask a few questions. I'll be in and out. Did you or any member of your family see or hear any large or unusual animals on your property? No. Are you even aware of the animal incident that occurred at Godet's farm last Tuesday morning? No, Godet likes to make up a lot of stories. This wasn't make-believe, buddy. I seen it with my own eyes. But listen, if you don't know anything, I don't think it's the best idea to try and ask around here, OK? Look, I got answers. Hey. Why are you harassing my family on our property? Now, look, I'm, I'm not harassing them. Now, I need to know, you boys seen anything cut across your property that killed Larry Godet's calf? Nope. The sheriff's office is taking this investigation very seriously. All right. Watch where you cutting across. We got traps and cameras set up all through Godet's property. Y'all have a good night. We done spent too much damn time setting all these up, and now we gotta move them because the wind changed on us. 
If we don't move them, I'm afraid we're not going to be able to get the thing in position the way we want it. Looks like it's going to be a wet night. Just hope we didn't scare off the damn thing we came for. It's just a Trent gun. It's non-lethal. There's no darts. The sedative we use causes loss of consciousness within minutes. It's coming down now. Anybody got anything? Got yeah, nothing. Nothing over here. Oh no, you can worry that wind's going to drive the thing wide. The thing might come around to the side. Either way, I'll handle it. I know you can handle it, girl, but I get to. You just shut the hell up, and nothing's going to come out at all. This way, slow down. You see him? There he is, there he is. Is he moving? Watch it, watch it. There it is, he's losing steam. He's going down right there. Let me see if he's high. Oh, man. Be careful. All right, we got him, we got him. Make sure he's down. Luke, what is it? Whoa. Okay. Oh, you guys stay back, God. stay back. Son of a bitch, look at the size of that sucker. Except we got ourselves a bear. He's huge. Good shot. Thank you. You guys keep your, keep your yeah. distance. Yeah, he's out. Yeah, he's out. The color of that fur look familiar? Look how red he is. You guys want to get a closer look? Come on in, just look up past that tree. Don't be careful now. Look, he's, he's claws. Oh, look at that. It's definitely that print. It's missing like three claws, huh? Yeah. This thing is easy grab a hold of there, good day's cow. It's the only thing that could have. All right, well, all I know is now that we got us a bear, we need to call wildlife and fisheries. Yeah, see if you get some reception, get them out here. You guys get what you want for this, because work, work. it wakes up. You don't want to be around here. Heading over to Larry Gaday's farm, give him the good news that we think we got it. When I first saw Larry's cow, I didn't think it was a bear attack. Bears wouldn't normally attack a cow like that and just leave it there. They'd tear it apart. But the bear we got was huge. Could have easily taken that cow down and dragged it through the field. I'm sure when Larry's workers came in that morning, it took off before it had time to finish. And its reddish coat, that's what gave Maggie the skunk ape vision. Wildlife and fisheries picked up that bear we trained. Best they could tell, they've been pulling fish out of the pond over in this Maggie's place for the last few nights. I'm fairly confident that's the same bear that tore through today's farm. Y'all overachievers, driving too fast. Gonna get a ticket one of these days. He deserves a cup of coffee. Thank you, sir. You hear the good news? That's what I understand. We got us a bear. You sure you got the right bear? For Darn sure. sure. And that bear was over six foot tail to snout. That thing would drag five times its body weight. That bear was out there gnawing on your cow. Yeah. I bet you your boys came in and scared it off. Well, I'm glad y'all finally got it. Hey, you be breathing easy again once we get these traps out of here, all right? I know Luke seems to think he got it under control, that that bear did that to that cow. I mean, it was 
Paul was injured. He was hanging around Maggie's place, and there ain't no big game. The bear that size would be after. He's hanging out there, just getting a little bit of prey. That's all they could catch. Whatever took down that cow had to have been a lot tougher than that bear. I think there's something else out there. Yeah, you got to be careful when you set these traps up. Forget where they are. Ruin your day. Hey, look. Come here. Hurry up. Come here. Ah, hold on, here. honey. I'm coming. I'm coming. You set them. They do your job. You come out and catch a critter. Look at this. It's all bent. Man. What I ain't never done seen that, this. boss? What are you doing? Setting broken traps for it? Seriously. I ain't f***ing around. Look at that. The springs are even busted. Whatever it was, it got hurt. Get out of here. Yeah. Look at this. What is it? It's the camera's there. Just ripped off the tree. There's no claw marks on the tree. Car's still here. See if you can pull up some pictures. See what did this. Did the kids come through here with a baseball bat? I mean, you gotta run over it with a truck to do that. Get a picture, see if we can figure out what did this. Right there, right there, hold on. Oh. What is that? What is that? Those eyes? What's that? What's that? What's that? Are those teeth? We tranked that bear at 113. We had to record it for wildlife and fisheries. And when my trail cam got knocked down, timestamp was 339. So there's no way. This ain't our bear. Throughout the United States, there are legends of strange, unidentified creatures stretching back hundreds of years. This program is a legend brought to life. It's told through dramatization, eyewitness accounts, and expert interviews. Some images are violent in nature. Viewer discretion is advised. There's a monster that'll come out the marsh and grab you up in a heartbeat. Something is killing animals around here. Just because you don't believe don't mean you're safe. Did you hear that? Oh, dear God. Some people go into the swamp. They don't come out. A dangerous predator is terrorizing this remote southern Louisiana town. This is definitely a nest. Some locals are beginning to blame a legendary swamp beast they call the Rougarou. The town's animal control team is getting flooded with calls about livestock mutilations and missing pets. The hell is this? But most recently, they discovered dozens of animals apparently slaughtered as offerings to ward off this mysterious bayou monster. I gotta defend myself! But now, locals fear that whatever is causing the carnage Pretty bad shape. has developed a taste for human blood. I don't recognize them, Yvonne. Not what's left of them. Sheriff's office got a call this morning from a trapper. Apparently, he was way out in the swamp, and he came across a corpse. He's been there a while. Folks were already scared when it was just their animals turning up dead. I just hope the whole town don't go out of control. Where'd y'all find him at? All the way around the bend, and then over on the other body over there. He wasn't in the water? He wasn't. Kind of a strange looking body. But as far as I can tell, he's got some abnormalities of his extremities. I'll get your report as soon as you can. OK. <laughs> We realized that that body we found was that of Amos Jagno. He's from a big family out here. With all the Jagno brothers, cousins, and sisters, I mean, there must be 30 or 40 of them. No one even knows, and no one ever bothered to report Amos missing. I guess that's because these Jagno boys, they always going out on hunting trips, and they know the land better than anyone else. And you know, that's what worries me. I just don't know how Amos could have gone missing or, or how he died out here in the swamp. Once the town gets wind that one of the toughest guys around died out here, people are going to get scared. Looking at Amos's body, it's a lot easier to believe an animal could have done this. 
So that's why we called out the Cajun Beast crew to come check out the spot where he was found. The wounds tell me that I think an animal got a hold of him, ripped his throat like that. Maybe your team will see something ours aren't trained to. Of course, whatever we can do to help. So what's your read on all this trio? I mean, y'all saw those cuts. Remind you anything in particular? Yeah, Mr. Lay's cow for sure. The cuts on the body look like the same ones that was on Mr. Lay's cow. Looked like he went out to him next. There wasn't no animal nor human what did this. There is something bigger out there. It's got to be the Ruga Ruga. A lot of people have a lot of different beliefs around here about what it could be. If they think it's a shape shifter, some kind of wolf man. I think that thing could be some kind of demon spirit or something. I ain't gonna mess with no demon spirits. Mm -hmm. I'll on an alligator any time, but Ruga Ruga. <laughs> That's just some scary stuff. <laughs> In South Louisiana, the version of Bigfoot is Rougarou. It takes many forms. It's never the same. I know it as Loop Guru, the French werewolf. Half human creatures coming out of the swamp with roots and moss growing all over you. The Rougarou sleeps under the water during the day and comes out at night. If he gets your scent, it's all over with. The only problem with the crime scene in the swamp is in a few hours, everything will change. Water rising, animals trampling around. But how long ago do you think this happened? Hard to tell. The body's all the way cold and his wounds are dry. But I mean, he should have been chewed over more than he was sitting out here overnight. Ah, plenty of scavengers out here. Something should have found him. Many descriptions of odd and unusual animals could very likely be the basis of the discovery of new species in the future. Across the globe, there are these stories of hairy man-like creatures, the wild man of the woods. As a biologist, I'm quite impressed by a commonality in the ecological factors. The woods, these are wilderness areas, they're in forests, they're in the type of terrain that you would expect a primitive population of man-like creatures to exist. I'm absolutely convinced that there are species yet to be discovered that have evaded our detection. This is where we found them. Where was the body at? I found them right here. Well, it's all cut up. I don't see no blood. Can't see much sign of a struggle through here. You see any drag marks anywhere no. outside of this little circle you got? Negative. Any chance Amos was in the water, then a gator came, bit him by the neck, and put him back on the bank once he had bled out? <laughs> no. Well, uh, we best get to walking it. I'm gonna go out this way. Where's he going? He knows what he's done. They worried about gators? The gators worried about ghouls. Hey, y'all. I think I got something over here. Uh, what you got? Well, right here's a drag moth. Oh, I got yeah. where the brush is bent over right there. I got blood on the branch there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Drag for sure. There's more blood. Oh, yeah. We're on the trail now, boys. Jules, you suppose a critter could kill Amos, drag him around, not eat him. Territorial, maybe? Yeah. You could have stumbled up on a nest, you know. You know how parents are about their children. They're pretty protective. So whatever did that could be trying to protect its young from us? Maybe. You may want to consider that it may not be a man or an animal. Nope. I know you got about a dozen of those Bayou Boogeyman stories up in your mind that your grandmama was telling you. But I'd sooner believe Amos crawled this quarter mile bleeding out. If anybody was tough enough, it'd be him. Yeah, well, I can't rightly put Rougarou under cause of death either. I sure the hell would. Good to see you. Tim, 
I turn to Hans and Denise at the ecological lab anytime we run across something that gets us stumped, and they usually have answers for us. About a week ago, Luke got a call from an old friend in town, Joe Broussard. He said something's been picking off his animals at night. He actually got an audio recording of what he thinks killed him. Hans and Denise were going over the tape for us, but unfortunately, they couldn't find a match, so they crowdsourced it online. They posted the audio to Zoology Forum, and we got a response from a guy who's into what he calls cryptozoology. This is Quentin Schuster. Quentin's brought me a number of samples with his theories attached over the years. Your recording intrigued me. Cryptozoology is the study of hidden animals. Anything that doesn't qualify as a normal animal, you can't find it in a zoo, I go look for it. Your recording sounds a lot like a recording that some people would say is the Honey Island Swamp Monster. Help each other. I've got a truckload full of equipment, thermal imaging, nighttime vision goggles, field recorders, local contacts with transportation. One of the perks of being a cryptozoologist is the gear. I've got heat sensors, infrared, ultrasonic. I've tracked a lot of cryptids with this equipment in the past. You see this gear. Cryptids are species that are unrecognized by science, whether due to a lack of definitive evidence or because of the elusive nature of the species. When it comes to contemporary reports of encounters across the globe, they often have different names, but the descriptions are remarkably consistent of the wild men of the woods. The Chinese Yeren, the uh, Indian Mondebarong, the Caucasus wild man of Russia. Across the United States, in the Pacific Northwest, we have Sasquatch, and California, and Bigfoot, and Florida, the skunk ape. In the southern bayou country, the Cajuns have the Rougarou. Tired of walking through this mud yet? I am. Oh, look at that. Look at that. There it is. Jesus. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's all a lot of blood. That ain't like any kill site I've ever seen before. I can't tell whether it starts or stops. There's definitely an ugly struggle going on here. Oh, there's got to be a track around here somewhere. I got something. What do you got? I'm not sure. Doesn't look like anything belongs out here. Oh, man. What the hell is that? Tell me an animal got a hold of him, ripped his throat like that. The Cajun Beast team has been called in by law enforcement to determine whether an animal could have killed local man Amos Jagno. We got something. While at the scene, they discover something unusual near where Amos's body was found. I found something. I got something right here. What you got? I'm not sure. Doesn't look like it belongs out here, though. Oh, wait, wait, don't touch it. No, oh, don't touch it. I don't know if I'd pick it up, man. What is this, some kind of voodoo doll? You ever seen anything before like this, Jules? Hmm. I mean, this has to be related to it, huh? Like maybe some kind of voodoo well, or? Voodoo's never this violent. I'll take you to someone who knows voodoo. It's not unusual to find old hunting gear or a spent shell casing out here, but this, this ain't typical. Could be something that Amos got separated from or it could be something somebody dropped along the way. Only problem with that is not too many people in the right mind would come out this far. 
The religious cultures and ways here are as unique to the people as a fingerprint. Lots of old beliefs here use totems or talismans. Little figurine dolls meant to connect with greater power. There's some spells that are cast for good luck, some bad luck. Some of them would have hair on them or blood or a fingernail or a tooth. Those were specifically made up to do something to that person. Some people use voodoo for protection against evil. Down here, people use voodoo to protect themselves against all dark things, including the Rougarou. This old boy's seen better days. Ah, he's dead. Looks like maggots are already getting at it. It's starting to rot. You got yourself a goat. It's gonna be a process getting it out of there, but these two boys and I will take care of it. God, it oh, he's an old soul. Probably wandered under there looking for some shade, and that was that. You gotta catch that rougarou. There you go. Well, you can't catch what ain't out there. Go out there at night and tell us there's no rougarou. I'll tell you what, boys, you can go out there and look all you want. You ain't gonna find no rougarou. You take that to the bank. OK, well, then tell me about Amos Jagno. He's dead. Yeah, incredibly something dead. Something big had to done that. Normally, with something like this, we'd be out in a half hour tops. But with what's happened to Amos Jagno, folks' nerves are they're in overdrive. You know, and there's a lot of people asking a lot of questions about things I'd rather not spend my time on. But part of our job is making people feel safe, and part of making people feel safe is listening to what they have to say. Get under there and spread that tarp out. Serious things been happening around here. The town gets all jittery. First thing they want to do is run to somebody and tell them, oh, this happened, that happened. When people get scared, rumors start to fly, and they blame things. It's like spreading a warning. You know, make sure your friends and family are ready for this. We have a 38-year-old Caucasian male by the name of Amos Jagno. Big slash type wound here on his neck. There was a severe laceration to the neck. It was done with some significant force. OK, make some notes for me, measuring four inches right under the chin. And it starts down and goes front to back, the downward angle, stops at the sternomuscular muscle. Would have appeared to have occurred if someone had fallen from 12 to 15 feet, or possibly been thrown from a boat to hit some jagged edge. But when we studied the wound, we didn't define any debris that was consistent with any of that. I don't know how this happened. I'm going to measure from the end of his index finger up. He doesn't have any fingernails on this side. What does it look like? Is Same all, thing. They're mm -hmm. all missing? Yep. Never seen that before. This is not postmortem changes. This has some signs of healing, so it looked like they may have been missing for prior to his death, I would say, at least three days. I have some unconfirmed reports that um, he'd been missing in a swamp for 30 days, but he appeared to only have been dead for 48 hours. He was surviving basically with his hands. His fingers were so damaged from digging and climbing. He was rooting like an armadillo to try and survive. Let's take a look at the stomach. Do you get the big four sacrifice, or are you going to no, just small. Okay, it looks like I'm finding some raw meat. There's bone matter. Look at this. You got some type of little ribs. It look like, almost like a rat. It's like he swallowed it whole. How could he go down his esophagus? There was a lot of bone matter and tissue in his stomach, which suggests that he was trying to survive by eating animals, raw. Look at this severely deformed right foot. The large toe seems to extend out inward. Have you ever seen something like that before? This is the most severe case. This is some really weird You know, a lot of people have deformities that they cover up. We come in here in the morgue, and it's not uncommon. But the shape of the victim's foot looked almost like a hand. It looked like it almost had a thumb to it. He had no activity 
of animal bites or anything like that that had been gnawing at his body. I determined that he had a certain amount of methamphetamines in his system. If a person does have methamphetamines in their bloodstream, animals will not eat the tissue. How did he end up like he did? We have not been able to conclusively determine that. They said when they found Amos's body in the swamp, he had been laying there for days. But there was no decay, no bacteria, no maggots on him, nothing. You know why? Because the devil don't decompose. He ain't got no blood like me and you. He got that Rugaru blood. So the police, they say that Amos is dead and gone. But us locals, we know the truth. He'll be back. Got a call from the groundskeeper saying there's howls coming out of the cemetery. I figure it's probably a pack of coyotes or wolves, maybe wild dogs that need to be run off. This is what it's come to, dog catchers for the undead. Look for tracks. I don't see anything. Nothing. Just a goose chase. Think we missed it? I'm definitely seeing canine traces. Probably just a neighborhood pack out for a run. Did you see that? No. Where'd it go? Look, here, here, go. You see him? There, right there, right there. Where, no, where? This way, this way, come on. Yeah, take this back right here. This way, this way. Where'd they go? You gotta stay back. Stay back. There they go. There they go. Come on. Come on, you can get him. Oh, Cam, Cam, Cam. Let him go. What? Why? Good lord. What you got? Take a look at this. Watch your step, watch your step. What the hell? It's like a sacrificial graveyard. As calls from panicked locals continue rolling in to Cajun Beast Animal Control. Did you see that? Uh, this way, looks this like way. a bunch of dogs. The team makes a shocking discovery. Let him go. What? Take a look at this. A massive bone pile unearthed by a recent rainstorm. Do you think any are human? Hope not. I see this big mess of all these different kinds of animals, possibly human bones in there. It's going to be hard to tell unless we can find some skull or something. I've seen at least a half a dozen different kind of animals here. So I guess the storm just loosened them up and the dogs did the rest? If that's the case, they've been working on this for a while. Bones didn't come from the cemetery, because those are safe in the stone crypts. We're outside the boundary of the cemetery here, so maybe the rain unearthed the bones from an old Indian burial mound, or I don't know what it could be. I ain't seen a single skull yet, not even a piece of one. Well, what do you take that to mean? Well, it means they didn't die of natural causes. What's that? Nothing. It could be a couple red wolves echoing off the waters in the bayou. We should just call the sheriff. Well, Let him deal with it. Just keeps getting deeper and deeper. You know, stumbling upon a bone yard with a dozen or more different kind of animals, no skulls there. Let's go. Come on. I'd really like to figure out what the hell's going on out here before it just gets any more out of hand. Since folks are thinking that Amos Jagano was killed by some animal, we've been getting calls nonstop. 
So since I got that uh, Quentin fella hanging around, I figured might as well send him a, one of my crazier calls. No, I want to try to give Quentin the time of day, but he's a bit eccentric. Someone saying the devil's been climbing up the side of their barn seemed right up Quentin's alley. Part of the Rougarou legend is a belief that it's an evil spirit that can possess both people and animals. <laughs> the Rougarou can take control of someone and make them do violent things. The legend is that the Rougarou, he feeds on these souls. And once your soul is taken by the Rougarou, it's going to be on you for 101 days. You know, people around here, they see stuff out in the swamps that uh, they can't explain what it is. It's like devils or demons that can like get inside of people and change them. I know my son had to dig a grave. And when his shovel went through, this mist came up out of it. And it got ice cold. And he was paralyzed. They pulled him out of there. And he said he couldn't hardly catch his breath. It was like something passed through him. Things are changing, starting with the animals. I happen to be sitting in my front room, and I hear this big bam. The window smashed, and it was 100 bats come screeching in that window. I was down on the ground. It, it, it was like never-ending bats. Come out this morning, here they were. I mean, I've been hearing things. Folks saying the devil come to town, tearing up a cow. I never believed it until I saw this. Hoof prints right up the wall of my shack, six of them. Just put this building up last week, didn't even have time to get it blessed. As a cryptozoologist, I'm a skeptic myself. That's why I do this. But part of the job is convincing people. And I convince myself first, then I convince others. Let me ask you something. Any uh, tracks leading the way? Eh? No, sir. Devil just floated right up, walked right up the side of the wall. Like when you built this, was it uh, board by board, or was it one large panel? That's that a four by eight panel. Any of your neighbors? They keep livestock. Well, the fellow down the bayou's got some sheep. You definitely have hoof prints, but they're not the devil. They're your neighbor's sheep. I, I put this up myself. I, there was no hoof prints on there when I put this up there. No, I'm this sure. just happened this morning. Well, what I think we have here is a sort of uh, sheep fingerprint situation. Your panel was on the ground. Your neighbor's sheep walked right over, leaves some oil, and uh, a couple of days of wind, dirt, sticks right to it. Fingerprint. There are many instances in history of strange footprints. One of those, the Devonshire devil tracks. They look like hoof prints, but appeared to have gone along the tops of walls and across roofs and through brick walls even. Now, whether this was a clever hoax or what, I think given the historical nature of this, we'll, we'll never know. When it comes to footprint evidence, it does require a great deal of discrimination and care, which comes through lots of experience in working with and identifying tracks. I've learned from my experience with the Sasquatch phenomenon that many observers are, are not reliable, and unless there is very well-executed photographs and preferably casts of the prints, one simply can't rely on the anecdotal testimony of, of a witness. Out at the spot where Amos was killed, we found this figure. Looks to be some kind of voodoo. Now, Jewel swears for spells, hexes, hoodoo, whatever you want to call it, you got to get a voodoo practitioner. So we're going to see a friend of his who knows a lot about this kind of stuff. Hopefully, she can tell us who this was made for. This uh, practitioner. Yeah. How you found out about her? I've been coming out here since I was a baby. My mama would just take me out here. The way Amos's body was torn up, it's hard to tell if it was a man or animal that got him. Uh, 
Uh, either way, we ain't got a lot of leads. Now, if, if we find out just who made this doll, then maybe we can ask that person a couple questions. Knowing a little more about this doll may give us a little more insight into what the hell could rip up a tough bastard like Amos. I stay away from voodoo. It's evil. Voodoo does not have to be used to harm. We practice voodoo to protect ourselves from the voodoo. You can go to the voodoo priest or priestess and, and have them make you up a, a little bag of grigri that you can keep on you so that nothing evil can harm you. You know, when we come back, it's going to be dark. You got your gun, don't you? Hey, Jules, I reckon that's her. Right up here. What the hell is that? In this remote bayou town, eyewitness accounts of mysterious creatures have been mounting. It's humanoid. I mean, it walks upright. And someone or something has been mutilating livestock. Now, Deputy Lambert and Jules are investigating an unusual object they found near the body of local man, Amos Jagno. I'm glad it's on up in there. What the hell is that? You got that rope right up there? Tie on to it. Couldn't find a house on dry land, huh? Come on in. Hey, Miss Ann. Hey, now. I brought a friend here. This is Deputy Lambert. He's got a couple questions he wants to ask you. Evening. Cut to the chase. We found this near the scene of uh, an investigation. Is this some kind of voodoo doll? We don't even use voodoo dolls in the voodoo religion, and we don't do anything to harm anybody. And, you know, I hate to say it, but this really looks like it's a darker ritual object. What you mean, darker? There's something in here. Is that a tooth? That's what those three horns were. Dark practices that require human parts, uh -huh. the only use for that is to harm somebody. You know, you know people around here that do black magic? Anybody into that is going to do it in secret, something like that. You might as well go out and tell folks that you made a deal with the devil. There's many, many different things that go on that are tied to these ritual satanic ceremonies. A lot of it's done in the middle of the night in bad places. It still goes on to this day. Some of these people, yes, they're reaching the spirits. They can talk to them. They're there. Everybody's scared to death. Everybody's talking about Amos Jagno's body. Just up and disappeared from the mark. First I heard somebody stole the body. Now people tell me he just got up and walked off on his own. Some people say that he might have been a rougarou. If you ask me, that's what they pulled out of the swamp. And that's what broke back out of the mark last night. A Ruguru takes on all kinds of shapes. Looks like an animal, looks like you, looks like me, looks like anybody. You can never tell what they're going to be. They say all them Jagos are Ruguru. That's why they live back in the woods. That's why they act so damn crazy. I tell you one thing, I don't want to be anywhere near one of those damn things. Well, one of the legends of the Ruguru is that it is a shapeshifter. It's able to either take on the form of another creature, like a a wolf, or actually take possession of another being. As such, we sort of step into the realm of the paranormal outside of what we 
think of as normal biological function. Hey, Vaughn. You sure missed the party. I heard over the radio that Yvonne had apprehended one of the Jagno boys. Apparently, they broke in somebody's house and had a good old time, shooting guns, fighting, screaming. I guess this is the Jagno's idea of a wake. Most of them ran off. I figured it'd be a good time to get some one-on-one -on -one with one of these Jagno boys. I want to show you something. Now, if you know anything about it, it might help you, considering your circumstances. Have you ever seen anything like this talisman before? Does it mean anything to you? We found this at the spot where your brother was killed. Amos ever carry around anything like this? Silence ain't gonna help us catch your brother's killer. It'll take us days to sort this out. You tech over there able to figure anything out? Not yet, but we're still digging. The thing is, a lot of these skeletons aren't intact, so it's a lot to work out. Now the sheriff's word, some of these bones might be human. And that's what I was afraid of. You think maybe it could be a old barrel mound? Got a few of those around here that aren't marked yet. They got an Indian burial ground down Grand Kaya. I passed by it in a vehicle, but never went walking in the grass and in the trees and all that. I don't like to mess with the dead. Leave the dead alone. Indians believe in the hallowed ground where the dead are buried. I don't believe in desecrating hallowed ground. The Indian souls are still there, and you don't want to disturb them. If you do, you could anger them, and their spirits will come to harm you and make all sorts of evil things come to pass. The guy dug up some arrowheads, killed in a car wreck the next day. member of a local tribal community coming out here. Hey, maybe he can sort some things out, but I'd appreciate if you guys stick around, help us identify some of these animal remains. Yeah, sure, we'll be around the area today. I know her, hold on a second. Hey, Katie. Hey, everything all right? No, it's my boy. They're gone. They've gone into the swamp, trying to catch the Rougarou. You gonna catch that Rougarou? There you go. You can't catch what ain't out there. I've been calling them all morning. They're not answering the phone. The sheriff's not doing anything to help. Yeah, they're not going to get involved until it's been at least 24 hours. How about we go take a look for them? Really? Yeah, we'll go take a look. You got nothing to worry about. Listen, they're probably going to show up at home. Police are going to have to stay here. So once you get on home and they turn up you let Trio there know and he'll uh, he'll get word to us. Thank hey, you, hey, babe. you're gonna be all right. That'll be fine. Everything's gonna be Thank fine. You. So what, we're handling missing persons now too? <sighs> you heard her, Tam. Yeah, but those kids probably only been gone a couple hours. Probably on their way home right now. Well, she's scared out of her mind. No one wants to help her, all right? I'm sorry that I volunteered you to do this. Uh, night comes quick, so we better get started. You get lost in the swamp, pretty much you you belong to the swamp. If they don't know the swamp, they're not coming back. You get lost out there, your mind starts playing with you. The darker it gets, it just will turn you into a scared child. You don't have anything to find your way. That's it. We'll hopefully find your body and bring it to your family someday, but that's it. I should have told those boys when I was there. I should have told them. 
Told them what? <laughs> Told them there's nothing out there. Tell them it's just this town spending stores the way they do. Well, you know, there actually is something out there now, so. Well, whatever it is, whatever animal it is, it's still there. And if Amos Jagno couldn't handle it, neither can these boys. Come sundown, it doesn't matter if they find whatever the hell it is we're looking for or not. Those boys are in some real danger. Jules, you getting close? Humans can potentially be attacked by almost any large animal in a swamp, particularly because the water is so murky, it favors ambush predators, things that hunt by stealth, and that'll just lunge up and get you when you don't see it coming. Alligators, venomous snakes, things like the water moccasin, and large land predators, potentially bears, wolves, would also potentially be something that you would run into in southern swamps. Hey, good. Hey. Go? Hey, bud. Thanks for coming out. Y'all don't have to go with me. No, we're going. Well, I'm in. More of us out there, the more ground we cover. I got tons of equipment. Surveillance, tracking. Tell him. She knows. She's seen it. He's actually got a lot of tech I think we might be able to use on this. I can get a helicopter. All right, then. Well, let's get going. I'll meet you at the dock in an hour, and we'll take off. OK. Go yeah, let's Go. Get it. All right. Come on. Got to make a call real quick. When you live in a bayou town, you see weird stuff all the time. But what's been happening here these past few weeks, it's that's a level of craziness none of us have seen before. Animals being mutilated, folks seeing swamp monsters everywhere, tales of Amos Jagno's body walking out of the morgue, and now this pile of bones. Half the town, including Jules, is thinking it's the legend of the Rougarou. But Luke doesn't believe it, and I can't either. There's got to be concrete evidence and reasons behind everything. We just got to figure out what it is. Swamp's an endless maze. A lot of folks, they get turned around, they never make it out. That's real enough. Even if those boys did know the way around, Swamp's a harsh place. A whole lot of ways to end up in the water face down. It doesn't matter what you think or fear might be out there. Things that really are out there are bad enough. I'm going to slap the piss out of them boys when I find them. Somebody's been through there. Jacob Jonah! They've for sure been here. Fresh tracks. Luke, you copy? We're moving as fast as we can. Every hour that you're lost in the swamp, the odds drop that you'll make it back. Jacob Jonah? Boys, call out. You hear me? Throughout the United States, there are legends of strange, unidentified creatures stretching back hundreds of years. This program is a legend brought to life. It's told through dramatization, eyewitness accounts, and expert interviews. Some images are violent in nature. Viewer discretion is advised. There's a monster that'll come out the marsh and grab you up in a heartbeat. Something is killing animals around here. Just because you don't believe don't mean you're safe. Did you hear that? Oh, dear God. Some people go into the swamp, they don't come out. A vicious predator is terrorizing this remote southern Louisiana town. Many locals are beginning to blame a legendary swamp beast they call the Rougarou. After discovering the body of local man Amos Jagno, fear is turning to terror. Jacob Jonah, hold up! 
The Cajun Beast Animal Control Team has set out on a rescue mission to find two boys lost in the swamp. Who are you guys? We're looking for a couple kids. They're in a real bad place. Jacob, Jonah! But disaster strikes when a member of the search team is found dead. It's Quentin. And Tammany's cousin, Jules, is missing. Look, where is he? We're going to find him. Stay calm. Jules! 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 He ain't moving. Do you have a pulse? Jules. He's breathing. Okay. He's breathing. First aid, can you have a kid or anything? Sit up, Jules. Come on, buddy. Sit up for me. Talk to me, Jules. Say something to me, buddy. Hey. Hey, buddy, what you remember? What y'all doing here? We're here fixing you up, all right? Looks like he got you a little cut. Look at me, you gonna be okay? Jules, you gonna be all right, bud? I don't know. Shock is a reaction to an event that is totally unforeseen and unpredictable. There can be a retrograde amnesia, meaning you knew what was going on while it was happening, but after it happened, the brain in a defense mechanism blocks the memory. Look at me, man. You know how you got in here? They can be irrational and begin to talk gibberish and nonsense. They can be unpredictable. They can be aggressive where they have never been aggressive before. He was talking. talking. Quentin was talking to you? Something was like falling. Us. Then we just got so a little separate somehow. We found Quentin. We found him dead. He was tore up about 100 yards from here. Come on, let's get you up. Let's get you on your feet. Come on. Gotcha. <laughs> Things have been pretty tense lately. Now, everyone around town is saying a monster is what is responsible for everything that's been going on around here. Now, as a deputy, you know, I'm trained to find the human explanation. And as hard as it is to believe a person is responsible for all these killings, well, it's the path I got to follow. Now everyone's heard we found a giant gravesite. Word is that there were people mixed in with those animal remains. Things can get pretty violent down here. We've got a lot of assaults, armed robberies, murders. We've got violence of all types. With everybody not trusting each other, it's not the calls to the station I'm worried about. It's those people willing to take matters into their own hands. The longer we can't give folks answers about what's going on down here, the more wound up they're getting. You put these folks in the corner, they're likely to lash out. Thirty-nine headquarters in ten ninety-seven. Mike, I need you to put down the gun, please. Mike, on the ground, please. What's going on? What happened? This jack trying to shoot my dog. Damn dog's going crazy. He was hiding under my porch, and when Christy came out the front door, he charged his ass. Did she attack your son? He was about to. I, I was just scared. All the animals around here have been going crazy ever since. Oh, come oh, on. Hey, 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 Obviously, we all ain't getting along right now. Christy, can you bring your husband home? Yes, sir. Take him calm down. Come Go. after my family. Okay. You're not Sorry. Put him down. Sorry, dude. Look, do me a favor. Just watch your dog. We got animals disappearing left and right around here, OK? All right. All right? You might want to take down that voodoo symbol, too. 
I don't know what's gotten into these pets lately, or their owners for that matter. But this is the second call I've been on this month of someone claiming they were attacked by some kind of possessed dog. All I know is people around town, they're getting spooked about everything that's going on. And they're taking whatever precautions they deem necessary to protect themselves. You got people out here practicing voodoo. Everybody's got their little thing to ward off the Roo Guru. Voodoo is a religion, and all religions have their talisman. They're all forms of insurance. I mean, it's better to have a little insurance, whether you believe in it or not, and not need it, than find out that you do need it and you don't have it. I carry my little Gree Gree bag. There was an old lady that I knew years ago. I was probably five or six. We would go to her door, give her a nickel for what was called a Dixie cup, a little paper cup filled with real sweet Kool-Aid that had been frozen. She was also known to be a hoodoo woman. During the day, people would cuss her, but at night, they'd go to her back door for her help. People knew what was good for them. We'd all be making offerings. Walking towards me. He's calling out. It's just a gator. You hear that? Come on. The boat's just around the corner. Looks like they caught him something. Huh? Keep going, buddy. Jules. Hey. That's it. That's the one that got me. Jules, you know a gator that size wouldn't attack someone like you. Right, Come buddy. on. Come on. No, no. Hey, so nice. Jules, let's keep moving. I'm not going anywhere. Well, if he ain't coming without it, then just bring it. Jules is out of his mind right now. He's not making any sense. But he needs medical attention right away. So if letting him have this gator shut him up and keep him moving, well, he can have the damn gator. Jules, I'm going to get it. Just keep going. Tammy, you jump up there, hand this over to you. I can't thank y'all enough. She's gonna be safe for that man. She'll be fine. I've seen her handle bigger and better. We'll keep a search out for those boys. Hey, we gotta get moving. Come on, buddy. All right, let's get moving. Come on. I'm gonna stay here. What? All right, if those boys stayed smart and on guard, I'll find them. You get a signal or service, you call the sheriff and let them know what happened to Quentin. And tell them where his body is. It's gonna be all right, Jules, all right? Be strong, buddy. He's trying to get Jules back to town as fast as we can. He needs a lot more help than I can get him out here. And Quentin, we talk about the dangers out here. I ain't never seen nothing like that. How you feeling? I got it now. What? The Kirk. What are you talking about? The Rougarou. I got the blood in me now. The Rougarou ain't real, OK? Maybe that's what got you, all right? Remember you told us that? OK. It's what they do. Oh, I don't feel so good. Just hang in there. Legend is that there's many different ways to become a Rougarou. Most believe if you're bitten by one, you are going to become a Rougarou. Other people simply believe that if you have an encounter with one, you may become a Rougarou. Some believe you've made some kind of deal with the devil or someone's put a spell on you. The belief is that once you're cursed by the Rougarou, you're going to be cursed for 101 days. And then after those 101 days, if you pass the curse on to someone, legend is 
that the one you passed it on to will come back to kill you. Wake up, Jonah! While searching for two boys lost in the swamplands, got a body. The Cajun Beast team finds one crew member dead. Over here, Joel! And another badly wounded. He needs stitches. But alive. I got it now. The curve. Hang in there, Joey. In desperate need of medical attention, Jules is being rushed back to town. I don't feel so good. Hang in there. I don't feel so good. Jules? Whoa, whoa. What are you? No. What are you? What are you trying for? Need the machete. For what? You gotta kill it. No, we're not killing it. What? Screw you. Hey, what is it on? No. That thing did not attack you. God damn it. <laughs> Picked up a trail a little ways back. It just went nowhere. Step on a soft patch like that and suck you down. Make you sorry you came out here. Okay, we'll have to find another way around it. I mean, I want to find these kids, but it's, it just takes a toll on you. I'm getting pretty far out. Can't get across this damn thing. Tell you the truth, this whole thing kind of struck a chord with me. I was younger than these boys, a couple of my older cousins. Said we we're all going out in the swamp one night. Of course, they were playing a trick. Left me out there on my own. Had to find my way back in the dark. You grow up hearing all the stories about the things that are supposed to be out here very real names of all the folks that never made it back. I was lost for hours. Felt like something was following me. Thought I heard it, too. A couple times, I even thought I saw it. It was dark, like a shadow. It was too big to be a wolf. It slipped away too quick to be a bear. I was convinced it was a rougarou. Scared to death. Ran like hell. Probably just a deer, a full-size buck or something. Point is, I know what it's like to be out here alone, scared of what you can't see, scaring yourself of what you can. <clears throat> Let's get moving. Marks. It's like the ones Quentin found. There's more all up and down through this stretch. He was right. Whatever did this didn't climb up there. It had to be big enough to reach. It's a good nine feet. It was uh, marking its territory, sharpening its claws.
claw marks again. Let's keep moving. I think Quentin was on to something. To be honest, the time's getting tighter and tighter. Just got to keep moving on. Stay the course. Wandering around out here, terrified. No use to anybody. When Amos Jagno's family stormed the morgue and took his body, they decided to cut through all the red tape, which means they are currently illegally in possession of his body. Now, the coroner, he was kind enough to sign those release forms after the fact, and he's willing to make it right as long as we can get those signatures. There we go. Sheriff's Department, any Jagno family member hearing this, y'all come out. What you want? Hey, hey, put the gun. Not any closer, buddy. We need to speak to whoever's responsible for Amos Jagno's affairs. Wife, parents, any kids over 18. He's only got one of those, but trust me, she don't want to talk to you. She needs a sign for Amos's body so we can let y'all have him. I already have my brother. But what you gonna do about it? How about we come back with a warrant and a lot more manpower? <laughs> Jagno. Let's see him. Come on. We just need those signed. That's as hard as it has to be. Otherwise? You have to surrender your boy Amos's body back into our custody. I got a god given right to bury my son anyway, please. Ma'am, it's in you and your family's best interest to sign those papers. If you don't, you're going to be in violation of the law, and a warrant's going to be issued allowing police access to your property to claim that body. You threatening me? Look, I, I know how much you Jagnos value your privacy. So it's just as simple as if you could sign this. Ma'am, it's just as simple. Get the out of here. Picked up a fresh trail ways back. It's likely our kids. Damn, that's the track. If we're lucky, it'll lead to a campsite. I don't know. Maybe the boys just found a safe place to hole up. This way. Yeah. I think we got us a hunting cabin. Jacob, Jonah. You boys up there? Anybody here? Hey, boys. Jules! Stay on call. He's breathing. With Jules severely wounded. Come on, Mike. Sit up for me. The Cajun Beast team splits up. Hey, we gotta get moving. Come on, buddy. While Tammany rushes Jules back to town, Luke resumes his search for the two missing boys. Picked up a fresh trail ways back. It's likely our kids. Following a trail, Luke comes across an abandoned hunting shack. Jacob, Jonah. Oh, dear God. What the hell? It's a butcher den. God, there's bones in here. That... It's like someone was gutted and torn apart. This is inhuman. I think for all of us, best thing we need to do is get out of here. We'll just get help. Anybody out there? Tammy, you copy? Damn it. The skull's it's got some ears on it. Judging by the marks, it's a fresh cut. If I was a gambling man, I'd bet that it was taken off that body in the cemetery. 
God have mercy. These boys are in a ton of danger. We gotta get the hell out of here. Mark it on the map. As soon as I get in range, I'll let the sheriff know, but this ain't my deal. I gotta keep moving. I gotta find those boys. People are getting really spooked. Right now, I'm more afraid of the folks around me. They're looking for personal protection, and they don't know what they're protecting against. Garu Garu is like part alligator, part wolf. Nine times out of 10, if you see one, they're going to catch you. Some people say you can be cured from Garu Garu, but my papa said that somebody has to kill you. Makes you wonder if that's not the Garu Garu going around, you know, picking off these people. We don't know what's happening. Lots of folks are real worried about the Rougarou. Because if it's a shape shifter or a demon, it can physically transform from one person to another. And when it does, it becomes a predator with the strength of many men. People look at each other with distrust in their eyes. Is he the Rougarou or is she the Rougarou? Because sometimes the worst monster is the monster inside. Deputy Lambert? Denise, right? Yes. I spoke with you on the phone. Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. We got the analysis back from the samples of animal matter and feces that Tammany gave us from that nest in the sugar mill. I hope you're coming with answers. Lord knows I got enough questions. She's not returning my calls, so I've just decided to give it to the deputy that was a part of the initial investigation when the samples were taken. So what you're looking at is a list of animals that have appeared to call the sugar mill home. So we found fecal traces and bacteria from each one of the ones in the sample Tammany provided. Nutra, fox, alligator, black bear. Mm-hmm. Bunch of animals like that sharing space together? That ain't normal, right? No, not at all. It's bigger than my tape. I ain't never measured a nest this big. That's not normal, even if it were over a long period of time. You know that claw you found on site the other day? That definitely was from a bear. And the fact that it still had tissue attached to it, that suggests a violent encounter. Maybe Tam and him can make more sense out of this than me. Now it seems there's a whole mess of other stuff. I'm not sure what to believe about anything around here anymore. Straight. Lost Quentin. You can only pray that Jules will pull through. You just gotta press on. Find these boys and get them back safe. Still don't know what to make of that. Hunting shack back there. No, I wouldn't want those boys 
running into whoever owns that place. As if some big animal out here wasn't bad enough. Jacob! are getting tense between the sheriff's department and the family of the deceased local, Amos Jagno. You have to surrender your boy Amos' body back into our custody. I gotta go give him right to bury my son anywhere I please. And deep in the swamp, Luke makes a gruesome discovery inside an abandoned hunting shack. Oh, dear God. These boys are a hunting danger. We gotta get the hell out of here. Jacob, Jonah! Jacob! Jonah! Jacob! Jonah! Jacob! Jonah! Over here! What's your best case over here? You boys all right? He's banged up real bad. Something with the water just got him. Can y'all get over here? I can't go back in that water again. Please, just come get us. All right, hold on. Just stay calm. I'm going to come get you. Jules OK? You lie. We got a team heading out to the spot where Quentin Schuster was killed. Okay. They'll retrieve his body, see if the coroner can determine some cause of death. We also got a team out there looking for Luke and those kids. OK, well, well I got to get back out there. I won't keep you too long. But I need to know what happened out there. Now, it's best we talk about this now while it's still fresh in your mind. Fine. So, um, we split up late afternoon. Uh, Quentin and Jules, they wanted to follow a trail of these dolls hanging up in the trees. Thought maybe some markers or clue to something. And I know it wasn't ideal to separate, but then we figured at least we can cover more ground. How long had y'all been separated? four or five hours, maybe, from when we split up to when we found Quentin's body. Was Jules around? He was uh, a couple hundred yards from, from Quentin's body. He was knocked out, so Luke sent us off back to get Jules checked out, and he went and continued searching for the boys. Was there anything strange about the way Jules was acting? He was cut up pretty bad. Lost a lot of blood and seemed like he was still in shock. Is Jules in any condition to talk right now? Like I said, he was in shock when we found him. Do you think there's any chance that Jules had anything to do with what happened to Quentin? You tell me no, I'm inclined to believe you, but I still got to ask. No. OK. All right, I'll, I'll talk to him. We'll square it away. Now, Jules, he's a long time around here and well liked. I'm inclined to believe he had nothing to do with Quentin's death, but more often than not, it's the person that's right under your nose is the one that's responsible. Hold on, hold on. Don't care. All right. I'm not. I'm not. I'm right here. You see how I step this way? There's a log in there. Come on. There's something in the water. That's why I keep this stick. Because you don't step blind out into the water. It's a gator locator. And be breathing easy and just sit. All right, come on, let's go. Get a move on, boys. Gotta get out of here. Pick up the things. Let's go. Still fine? Yeah, it's up here. Let's get your seat down, right here. 
You guys have a seat right here, all right? Let's just take a long walk for a second. It's bad. Oh, yeah. That ain't good. You got a bad bruise there. Yeah. Better take your belt off, make you a splint here, and help you walk a little easier. All right, that's good. Why don't you tell me what happened? We were looking for that thing, and it just it just felt like something was following us. So to get away from it, we swam out there. We waited it out, we hid, and we started to leave, and that's when something just poured him under. Ah! All right. I'm thinking you got caught up in some roots or something. I didn't feel like a root. I know what a root feels like. I hear you, tough guy. I heard all the ghost stories growing up. Ghost stories don't right. grab people and pull them under the water. We're going to catch you in town. Go by and see your mama. She's worried sick about you, boys. All right, go ahead and stand up. Come on. Yeah. Now, I need you boys to listen to something. You got a good reason why we need to get out of here as fast as we can. You see that sun over there in the west? Uh, it sets down behind those trees. We're going to be in big trouble. Hypothermia is definitely a concern this time of year. You get out in that swamp overnight, might not wake up next morning. Sooner or later, you're going to get sleepy, and you're going to want to lay down. And between the moisture in the ground and the wind in the air, it's going to suck all the heat right out of you, just like sticking in a refrigerator. I had a cousin that died in the 60s. He had wrecked his boat, and he had died of hypothermia. Every afternoon when he finished running his traps, he would go to the barn. And when they found him, he was kind of up in the cypress stumps. But he was staring at the lights and at the bar like he was watching his friends. They say his ghost is still at Kepler Point. It's awfully suspicious, getting turned away on Jagno property for asking for something as simple as a signature. And it got me wondering just what they're doing out there. So we decided to take matters into our own hands. We're going to use that illegal burial as a reason to get on their land. If they take exception to it, we need to be ready. But being since we're a small time sheriff's office, we ain't exactly stocked to take on an army, even if that army is a bunch of backwoods meth heads. So that's why I called Landry. He's a deputy from my old parish. They were kind enough to lend us some extra gear just in case shit goes down. Brought you all the good stuff right here. Now listen, I appreciate y'all doing this on such short notice. I sure hope you don't have to use any of this stuff. And I brought my babies right here for you. This is Boudreaux. Thibodeau, Sheriff Delaney's going to have us on alert in the event that you need a hand. Well, hopefully, we won't need to, but appreciate it, though. How come we ain't got a budget for this stuff? You guys go ahead and start making your way towards that sun. Are you coming? Yeah, I'm coming. I got half of mine to leave your ass out here. You hear that? Some big animal out here. Get a move on, boys. What we know is the Jag Nose broke the law by taking Anderson's body from the coroner's office. We can do something about it. If we can get past that gate, we're going to find what we're looking for. Whether it's evidence that they killed Larry Godet's cow or they're cooking meth. Or... Don't get ahead of yourself. We can round up every last Jagno, but that ain't going to solve any of our problems. Priority is whoever's been doing this killing, animal or not. Now, we're still waiting on a full report from the coroner's office for uh, Quentin Schuster. They're sending off the DNA tests of the wounds to try to determine the species of the attacker, since that's still up in the air. Finally found Jacob and Jonah. Lost, stranded way out. Jonah managed to bust his ankle up, but at least he's vertical. I just got to get these kids out of danger, get them back as soon as possible. All right, fellas, let's press on. 
Come on, give you a hand. Come on down this way. So we just gotta keep moving forward, all right? We gotta stay steady. Last thing we need out here is another mishap. Watch out. It's just a little ways off, all right? But it's gonna be best if we're if we're quiet through here. We'll just keep it down until we get to the boat, all right? Watch out. Some of the Jagno boys stormed into the morgue and took Amos's body, said they had a right to bury him on their land. They skipped past all the red tape, didn't sign anything, and this left our coroner with a lot of legal liability. I've got to account where that body's at. I need you to go out to the Jagno. We've given the family a chance to clear things up with a couple signatures, but they want to do things the hard way. It's in you and your family's best interest to sign this. I ain't this signing this shit. Come back down with your warrant. Which, in this case, means most of our sheriff's office marching into their property tonight. We also suspect there's a lot of illegal activity occurring out there. With all this craziness happening around town, who's to say this crew ain't involved with Larry Godet's cows, people going missing? Going after them for taking Amos's body is the easiest way to get onto their property to see what else they've been hiding. OK, what do we got here? Barnes and LeBlanc are going to stay at the gate. Once we cross their property line, they'll make sure no one comes or goes. Garrett's going to bring our guy in from the coroner's office, and once Amos's body is secured, he'll lead him out. Trio and I are going to keep this path clear of anyone coming or going. We don't know what we're walking into here. I mean, there's rumors of this family cooking meth, raising illegal fighting animals, so things could change on us at any given second. The coroner's only had a few hours with Quentin Schuster's body. We haven't heard anything definitive yet, but we're being told there's a lot of similarities between him and Amos's wounds. Go, 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 go